Hi everyone! In this guide I present an alternative way of getting a Templar through the first three acts using Rolling Magma. This setup also transitions into Armageddon Brand and Cremation at level 28, since uh, those are the most powerful skills caster have. In this video I'm only showing acts 1 to 3, commentating over a pre-recorded run, the method from Act 4 onward is identical to the one I showed in my Act 5 100% guide. I'll leave, a, I'll leave a link to it in the description. Uh, so the guide looks like that, it's not particularly long. Um, it uses the exact same tree as uh, the Orb of Storms Frost Bomb guide which you can see here there's also the link to the POB um, that's that's for you as well and if you need any more information about how to uh, level a caster with this specific kind of build or how to race how to learn uh, to race a caster the comprehensive guide is here okay if you have any other questions feel free to ask in the comments uh, below okay so let's get started. So this is a uh, fresh run, migrate only. To serve God. What you see on the screen right now is the rejects. So uh, what I do is I paste this into the search box of the NPC to highlight any specific uh, items that I'm looking for. So in this, in this case, anything with linked blue green, blue blue any scepters basically or uh, movement speed boots <coughs> as you saw I also put move only on several uh, different keys Even death uh, the reason for this is that land. Um, when I equip the gems uh, in submerged I want them to go on specific uh, keys just to make my life a little bit easier so I've got basically figured out that I want the movement skill Frostblink to go on W, so uh, it just makes it easier for me to put all those gems in. So match could be quite difficult if you are racing. There's a lot of gems to put in, you're, and you're navigating a pretty complicated layout as well. So once. Uh, the hillock fight transitions into the second phase. Try not to hit hillock because you don't want to freeze him because that's going to just uh, waste a bit of time. He's going to get stuck in the animation before he can uh, start his enrage. You usually want to pick up all the items from hillock. It would seem you might want to no need for vendor them for scrolls just or it just depends what you get from them. It's usually faster to log out rather than to walk to town. And here I'm looking for linked blue blue sockets using the rejects. I noticed that there was a body armor with blue blue and because I wasn't able to find anything with linked blue blue I decided to go for the body armor. It's it's very My important to have a blue blue for mud flats. Mud flats right now are extremely dangerous and the combination of rolling magma with elemental proliferation makes it much easier, much faster, much safer as well. So I'm only going to put the chest in I think near the mud flats and if there was a lot of monsters chasing me I would probably uh, kill some of them maybe they drop something useful and even if they don't like, they can always give me some some experience. So mud flats are extremely dangerous right now uh, so my advice would be to try to limit how many rows there are near you uh, just so that you know they don't surround you. I'm sometimes a little bit reckless around these draws and I get punished for that as well. You don't want to ignore the draws and go straight for the quest items and uh, die in the process. It's pretty annoying. My prayers are thus answered. You want to hit level um four before you get back to town so you need to get a lot of experience you need to be level four so that you can equip quicksilver 
and before you go on to submerged so that you immediately have some uh, quicksilver charges blue blue boots I probably should have come back for those boots um, I would much prefer to be wearing a blue blue boots rather than a body armor because body armor has an, a, a movement speed penalty but it's not too big of an issue I didn't really want to backtrack for those boots if I find a pair of boots with movement speed I will <laughs> replace them very soon anyway Okay, so I'm almost level 4, so I should be able to get to 4 easily after Hail Raid dies. You might notice that I tend to put all my all the items that I want to vendor on the right side of my inventory. That's just something to um, make my life easy. It's just a nice habit to get into if you are racing to put all the, to put things in specific uh, parts of the inventory. Once Hilaric dies, you want to pick up as many items from Hilaric as possible. Rare Definitely want to pick up rare boots and any rare items, basically. With this build, uh, you only need two wisdoms to buy gems, which makes I, it I quite a bit easier. So you pick up Quicksilver and Onslaught. I'm identifying boots. I got lucky, I actually got movement speed on two pieces. That's pretty unethical. Uh, fortunately, the colors are pretty bad. Um, so here, what you want to buy is um, Flame Wall and Arcane Surge. You always want to buy those two for two Wisdoms with this build. Goodbye. Since I have another Wisdom, uh, and here you want to get Holy Flame Totem and Frostblink. As I was saying, since I have another Wisdom, I'm also looking for any good links. I don't have a 3 link, and I don't have a blue-green either, so that's what I'm getting. So before you go back to Submerged, uh, you want to make sure you have a blue-green for rolling magma with onslaught and blue blue for frost blink with uh, arcane surge so that's the highest priority for you that's the main thing that you need so those two things i already have in and i also want to put in the flame wall and holy flame totem to as one links one links and you will always have room for them because you will probably be using the starting scepters. On Twilight Strand, the very first zone of the game, you get blue, blue, two blue. scepters. One at the very start and one from Hillock. Make sure to keep both of them. In some runs, uh, you might actually blue, end up using them until the end of Act 5. So, um, before your first sep scepter recipe, um, there's basically two ways to clear packs. You can either just use rolling magma on them, or uh, using a combination of Holy Flame Totem with Flame Wall. So the main purpose of Flame Wall in this build is um, anytime a projectile goes through it, it gets extra fire damage. So it goes great with Holy Flame Totem, it goes great with rolling magma. So as you see, you will see me... Um, put down Holy Flame Totem and Flame Wall in one spot and that should be able to clear blue, blue boots. basically any pack of white monsters and mostly clear a magic pack as well and if I don't do that then I simply uh, launch rolling magmas at the enemies and if I need some more damage I could potentially use Flame Wall with rolling magma as well the goal is to hit level 7 before you um, leave ledge. Chromatic. Iron ring. Iron it's very important to come back for iron rings. You will need them to create a scepter recipe. Scepter recipes work just like uh, wand recipes for anyone who's um, got experience using those. They are basically the most important Green, red part of uh, leveling a caster. The damage from those recipes carries you through the entire Rabbis. campaign, honestly. I've already got movement speed boots, so I'm not really picking these boots up for movement speeds, but uh, it's so that I can get some alteration shards for them when I vendor them. To create a scepter recipe for level 8, you need an orb of alteration 
a, a resistance ring, like a ruby, and a magic scepter. So essentially what you need is one ult, one transmute to use it on a, on a scepter, and a ring. Here, this is a very dangerous uh, area, especially around uh, where the fawn drops. You need to be really careful, especially um, when any of the Goatman Shaman have Molten Shell on. If you see uh, the Goatman Shaman with Molten Shell up, um, In this cage, don't ever damage him while you're next to him. Don't thinking. ever uh, Frostbling into him. That's just uh, instant death, basically. So, earlier on I placed the portal at the submerged uh, bridge. Now I'm coming back to it from the prison waypoint to complete the Dweller passive uh, point quest. So this run, uh, in this run I'm doing all the skill points. Uh, I'm doing the normal lab as well. I've already got several rare items, so it looks like I might be able to do a... Um, a one a scepter recipe uh, around the time I'm in prison. Uh, you need level eight to be able to use the scepter recipe. I'm almost level eight, so I'm, I think I'm just trying to get a bit more experience so I can equip the the brand new scepter as soon as I can. So here for the boss, you simply want to place holy flame totem and flame all in one spot on top of the boss and spam your rolling magma and after three or four seconds you want to pray place the flame wall again just to refresh that and uh, and just keep spamming rolling magma essentially so for every uh, one holy flame totem you place you will need to replace that flame wall once because holy flame totem lasts about twice as long as flame wall and if possible try to shoot the um, rolling magmas through the flame will just so that, get, that you get a bit more damage but for most of the run you have so, so much damage thanks to scepter recipes that you don't necessarily need to minimax uh, that much so here from Nessa I picked up combustion uh, which you need is for free obviously and I'm looking to do a one a scepter recipe so let's just have a look so I've got um, the ruby ring by using the iron ring plus uh, red gem recipe um, I'm not sure if I have any magic scepters equipped at the moment, so let's have a look. I need a magic scepter, I need an alteration as well. Ideally you want to be um, you want to be identifying rare items. I'm having some troubles. Uh, it's a pretty tricky thing in this case because I don't have a lot of wisdom. So I so sold some magic items for uh, transmit shards and then those for wisdoms. So I'm actually going to use the, the magic heaven. scepter that I found um, to create the recipe. I, I don't particularly care about the colors. As long as it's magic, it lets me do the recipe right now. The sooner I do it, the sooner I benefit from the huge damage boost. So it wasn't the uh, smoothest process of creating the recipe, but sometimes it's just a little bit challenging. Mostly because I had no no wisdoms to identify the rares. So any wisdoms that you find um, in the first half of Act 1, it's typically worth coming back for them, backtracking for them. Every wisdom really uh, matters. So because I can already use the recipe right now, the Brutus fight should be um, very quick and smooth. So once you already have your first scepter recipe, you should mostly be using rolling magma to clear packs, whether they are white packs or magic. The reason for this is you already have enough damage that you can clear those packs very quickly. You don't need that holy flame totem. Holy flame totem is nice, but it doesn't uh, generate you onslaught. So you ideally want to spend as much time as possible using abilities that generate onslaught so that you can move forward faster. I'm only working with a... Uh, tooling right now. I didn't get a thrilling yet. I will be blue, looking blue for that. Uh, but you don't necessarily need to have a thrilling. The build is powerful enough that even when you're missing some key components, it will still do great. The goal is 
to hit level 9 before Brutus, which I just did. Um, just a little aside, uh, after, after the Dweller, I didn't pick up the passive point. Um, I don't particularly like to pick it up before Brutus, I'd rather pick it up together with Leap Slam after Brutus, so I don't have to go to that NPC another time. Just saves me a bit of time and I don't particularly need that point. So for Brutus, just like for Dweller, you place um, Holy Flame Totem and Flame Mall on top of the boss and you essentially just spam Rolling Magma. You ideally want to Frost Blink uh, through the boss so that that do does a bit more damage and you proc Arcane Surge. Frost Blink is link linked with Arcane Surge for well, until the end of Act 3. Again, you want to pick up as much as possible, especially all the rare items. If you can, try to create a second recipe right now, but that's typically challenging. You typically need a bit more time. I think I figured out at this point that it would be near impossible to make a second recipe. So I'm just Farewell. rendering things quickly and moving forward. It's uh, not worth trying to min-max all the vendoring while taking an extra 40 seconds in town. It's better to just move on and do the recipe a little bit later. Especially in a run like this where you're still doing fair graves. Uh, you have plenty of time to do the recipe. If you can't do the second recipe in Act 1, do your best to do it at the start of Act 2. Defensive items like Chain Belt, uh, Coral Ring, Leather Belt, uh, Better Flasks, they're always worth backtracking for. Especially now when Act 1 is so dangerous. Okay, so from level 10 you equip Leap Slam. This is a for and those children, now you can start using the, the new movement skill combo. So the way this works is you Leap Slam and after you've Leap Slammed you uh, Frost Blink. There is no um, animation, so you can essentially do those. You can chain those two abilities uh, without any, um, without getting stuck in any animation. I think right now I'm um, not using it as efficiently as I should be, but it's it's pretty simple. You just uh, frost blink right after you've uh, landed with your leap slam. The main reasons to use this combo is, uh, well one, it, Frost Blink will end up doing a lot of damage to monsters in your way. Frost Blink will also generate um, Arcane Surge from, uh, for you. At some points in the run it's um, quite difficult to generate it in, in any other way. And also, um, the combination of Leap Slam and Frost Blink lets you travel a long distance very quickly because there isn't any extra animation. If you tried doing, for example, Leap Slam with Flame Dash, you would notice that after Leap Slamming, you are sort of stuck in an animation. So Flame Dash doesn't work in the same way as, as Frost Blink does. Stuck Please understand that as a gentleman of honor, the pain so I'm looking at uh, my inventory to figure out if I can do the, s the second Scepter recipe I think I'm slowly getting ready for it. I've got a blacksmith, which can get me four wisdoms if I vendor it. That should be enough to perhaps purchase a ring. I don't have a magic scepter, so I need to come up with that. That's plenty of rare items that should be should be very easy to create a recipe right now. Just picking up the, the reward. And let's see if I do the, the recipe right now. So I only need five extra transmute shards to have a transmute. So I'm only so that shouldn't be much of a problem. I've got exactly three wisdoms to buy an iron ring. The red gem that I picked up from Nessa that's uh, only to make a ruby. I think that was absolution, which the build doesn't need at all. If you pick up uh, the Fairgraves reward, 
before Mervale, you will have the 12 all rest node before Mervale. If you are ever struggling with um, the Mervale fight, I recommend you always do that. 12 cold rest is very useful. With this build, as with uh, most casters, you need to have. Well, you're aiming to do two level Blue 20 recipes blocks. at the end of Act 2. So for that, you need either two essences or um, two alchemies. So that's why basically any essences that you find along the way in Act 1 and 2, you should you should do. The only exceptions I can think of would be um, wheelie boys blocks. in the climb and crabs in. Blue green helmet. In the submerged passage. Those are the only essence monsters I can think of that I wouldn't blue, do. Blue chest. Pretty sloppy play from me. Uh, from me in the cavern of anger I almost died, but uh, I was busy, I think, doing some other stuff. So the Marvel boss fight just like um, Brutus Blue, green and helmet. Uh, the Dweller plays Holy Flame Totem, Flame Wall, and you spam Rolling Magmas. And I should be refreshing uh, Flame Wall after about 3 or 4 seconds. I run out of mana, uh, I only have a small mana flask, but I have a portal. That's a nice tip for you, if you ever have a uh, any issues with mana, make sure you have a portal just in case you need to go back to town just to refresh those life flasks. Okay, the fight is just about done. The DPS is very high. You already have two scepter recipes. Um, the DPS will be basically as high as this until the end of Act 2, at which point I'm gonna get two um, level 20 recipes, hopefully. Just swapping the helmet because it has an extra socket might, might need that at some point. Magic scepter. Here I try to identify rare items instead of blue uh, ones. It sort of gets boy. you more alteration shards per wisdom scroll if you do it this way. And uh, as you may have noticed, wisdom scrolls are premium premium um, currency in this game. Wisdom scrolls in races are kind of like. Fanatic. Chaos uh, drops in Endgame, maybe even more valuable now, honestly. At least in the first few acts. So that's the second recipe. Uh, I only need two, so I've got uh, basically all I need. It's very nice. So anytime your frost blink is not on cooldown, leap slam and then follow it up with frost blink. If frost blink is on cooldown, just leap slam as much as you can. Um, and notice how many monsters uh, essentially get one shot by uh, Frostbling. Frostbling is extremely powerful in Acts, um, well, 2 and 3 especially, but Act 1 as well, since you're using it from level 10. In this build, or in the build with uh, Orb of Storms and Frostbomb, I use it until the end of Act 3 and until after I've completed the lab. Here, um, I want to hit level 14 before I get to the level 2 of Chamber of Sins. I'm just about there, so I'm on pace with experience. Notice that uh, Rolling Magma is basically two shot in magic packs. It's an extremely powerful skill. What makes it so powerful is that it's got uh, extremely high damage effectiveness. It's got 280% damage effectiveness. So uh, it goes extremely well with uh, Scepter recipes that basically any caster build relies upon. It goes well with Heralds of Ice and Thunder, which I will be using from. Uh, around level 16, 17. It Green goes weapons. well with Anger, which I will be replacing the Heralds Blacksmith. with from level 24. It goes well with Flame as well. 
that's also flat um, damage, I believe. Transmute. Your trust is the only reward I need. Transmute and alterations are also premium currencies, uh, even more valuable than wisdoms, obviously. So you want to backtrack for them, un unless you've already got that plenty. So again, flame wall, um, holy flame totem, and just spamming rolling magma. Right now the damage is so high that I don't even need to refresh flame wall and holy flame totem. Here I don't think it's worth uh, buying any gems, it's better to do it after Weaver, so I'm just picking up um, Herald of Thunder and I vendored blacksmiths. Rolling. The main purpose of blacksmiths whetstones for a caster is to get um, wisdom scrolls. It's very different for a melee character since you're using the uh, weapon recipes with rustic sash, but for casters it's just source of um, wisdoms. Blue blue helmet. I want to make sure that I hit level 16 before Weaver, so I can put in Herald of Thunder and. Uh, to make sure that that happens, I want to be at least like 15.3 before Western Forest, just to be on the safe side. I'm um, almost 16, so I'm doing very well. Flask. Getting pretty lucky here, Quicksilver Flask. So what I haven't mentioned is that um, in runs using Leap Slam, I tend to skip the Den. I think it's pretty optional because you spend most of the time uh, Leap Slamming around. I think doing it well, skipping it or not skipping it, they're both viable options. I don't uh, imagine either way is much better. Um, so it's essentially up to you whether you want to make sure you get that second Quicksilver or not. It's also some extra experience by killing the monsters in the den. Do your best to upgrade your life plus. They make the run much, much safer. Especially in Act 1, I would say. I'm uh, pretty greedy. I don't usually want to spend wisdoms on um, life flasks, but if you are a little bit less experienced or don't want to die, uh, upgrade your life flask. You don't really want to enter Act 1, Act 2 with two small life flasks. So here, just like with all the other bosses, the, the method is simple. Put down Holy Flame Totem, Flame Wall, and spam Rolling Magma. The fight should go quite smoothly, even though you don't have any real way of uh, pre-mining the boss, like you do with Stoneblast Mine. That doesn't matter, it should still be a smooth fight. If you have two Scepter recipes, if you only have one, it should still be fine, just need to maybe uh, be a little bit more careful. So again, after the boss dies, you want to pick up as many rare items as you can, and the quest reward. Usually start with the quest reward. Just so that you have enough room for it. Hello. I'm looking for links here because I still don't have a blue, blue, green. Now I do. It costs a transmute, but it's uh, worth the Going. the, the money. I I'm picking up elemental focus, and I'm also about to buy Herald of Ice and faster attacks. So Herald of Ice is the second. I also need a ruby. Herald of Ice is the second reservation I'll be using. Uh, for level 20 you will need two rare ruby rings. Uh, so for this, usually the easiest way to, to get them is to buy or get from somewhere two normal rubies and then um, either alk them or use essences on them as, you, as I've just done. Um, the most consistent way to get rubies if they don't drop from monsters is to simply buy them from the NPC, like from Ina. If you want to minimax things, try to um, buy those rubies while you're at Ina anyway, buying other things, so that you don't have to go to that NPC an additional time. That's just a little uh, minimaxing tip if you are interested in um, improving your leveling times or speedrunning. So in this build I am helping Alira, 
and uh, whatever bandit you help, you want to go to that bandit last. So I'm doing Creighton and then Oak, and then after that, I'm going to help Alira and do the way forward quest. That's a lot of great loot for me. Um, I've been kind of lucky with currency drops um, so far. Later on, that might change. Just so that you know, uh, in this uh, build, as with most caster builds, you will need at least one chance orb or an orb of fusing to purchase uh, cremation uh, when you're doing the swap at level 28. So anytime a chance orb or a fuse drops, make sure to pick that up, backtrack for it, even if it drops in the previous zone and you have to uh, get back to it, it's always worth it. You might only find a single chance orb or a single fuse during the run, and if you don't come back for it, the run might get quite difficult. The king, that was. I was considering dropping her um, holy flame tournament at this point, but I think it's a little bit early. Um, if you need a red socket to use for level 20 recipe it's fine to drop it at this point holy flip totem becomes um, weaker from about the middle of act 2 and once you're in act 3 it, uh, it's basically lost its value almost fully Blue -green chest. the reason why I chose not to get rid of it yet is uh, I know I'll be going to act 1 soon enough Hello. And I can pick up a random red gem from Act One. Sorry, from Act One. I'll, I'll pick up a random uh, gem from Act One to Return. use with an Iron Ink if I happen to. Oh, I have an Iron Ink already. Great. So I'm also um, struggling with links a little bit. I want to make sure that I have a. I have a um, red green for faster attacks with Leap Slam. It's very important to have that from level 18 that improves your mobility greatly. Uh, so it's, it's basically the highest priority for me right now. I think I'm struggling to figure out uh, a good way to get a, um, a red green. Find the better chest. mana flask. Again, it probably would have been wise to actually buy one from the vantage just so I don't have issues with mana early on. I beg of you God. Help so I think I've figured one. out a way to have Chain red green. Down. It's not uh, the most efficient way but sometimes it's better to come up with a suboptimal solution quickly rather than spend plenty of time, time looking for a better one. I think the best solution would be to Blue green boots. Um, put the Herald of Ice in body armor, perhaps. I think I might do that later on. So at the end of Act Two, when I do the level twenty recipe, two of them, in fact. I will need, like I said, two rare rubies, two orbs of alteration, and two uh, magic scepters for them. If you've already done um, two recipes in Act 1 and you're happy to use the same scepters, then you already have two magic scepters. So two alts and two rare rubies. So I'm still missing one ruby. I've got the essence for it, and I am missing. I'm not missing any alts. I've got plenty of alts. Blue, blue helmet. You might notice I'm not using Herald of Ice at all. I think the reason for this is that um, if I wanted to use it, I have to put on my body armor, but I feel like I've, I've got so much damage thanks to two scepter recipes that uh, I would rather have a little bit more movement speed. And I don't particularly need that damage at the moment. I didn't really need to speak to that NPC, but that's okay. So, uh... I like to come back to Act 1 um, after I've done the 
the trial just to get all the remaining things from Act 1. I want this to be the last time I come back to Act 1. From Act 1, all we need is to pick up the passive reward I and do. Steel Skin. Steel Skin is optional. Um, it's just a very cheap layer of defense that I put on left click and I don't need to do anything about it really. I also bought a uh, random rare, a random red gem just so that I can uh, create a ruby ring for the recipe. So now I have absolutely everything I need for the recipes. Two alts, two rare rubies. I'm going to be using the two scepters that I have on me right now. Green red helmet. If you have uh, used caster recipes before, like once, um, you All might right. be surprised that I'm doing Blue recipes blocks. on scepters with such mediocre links. Scepters work a little bit different to ones. Uh, it's much more difficult to get like blue blue greens or blue blue blues on them because of attribute requirements and also um, NPCs don't sell very many scepters so you might have to, you often have to settle for scepter recipes on pretty mediocre um, scepters, on scepters with pretty mediocre links but that's fine um, this build is not Super gem hungry. Notice how much damage Frostbling is doing. This is one of the reasons why it's such a powerful combo. If you need movement speed craft, this is the craft. Make sure to pick that up if you don't have movement speed boots. I already have movement speed boots that I picked up in Act 1. It's essential that you hit level 20 before Vol Oversaw, otherwise, you can't use the level 20 crafts. That would be a pretty big mistake. I've unsocketed two alts just so that I can do the uh, scepter recipes just a little bit faster. The best way to do the scepter recipes is to um, do them while Fall Oversoul is doing this long animation, you know, that one that takes like 10 years. Uh, so that's a good time for you to unsocket all the gems from your scepters prepare whatever you need to prepare if uh, you saw me kill a monster possessed by tormented spirit it's a great source of uh, rare items if a, a um, leather belt if a spirit possesses a rare monster you always get some rare items from from them not that I particularly need them right now but uh, why not? Why not kill that monster? So I'm then gonna do the recipe here. I've got everything that I need. What? So scepters, two alts, and Roy. two rubies. <laughs> And I've still got plenty of time, even if I'm pretty slow, to um, put the gems back in. There's no pre-mining going on with this build. Just need to put on my heralds. If possible, try to always make sure that your Arcane Surge is procced for a boss fight by frost blinking right before the boss fight starts or frost blinking through the monster like I just did here. Obviously, you don't want to get slammed by Vol. Um, again, try to pick up all the rare items. You will need all charts or transmit charts. So, in a typical run, um, I will come back to Act Two at some point um, after killing the Lunaris Piety. I need basically three gems uh, on this build. I will need. Wave of Conviction, um, Desecrate and Concentrated Effect. Now in this run, because I'm getting very lucky with items, I know that I will already have enough to get all of the all of those gems now, so I won't have to come back to Act 2. It saves me a bit of time to ID those items now, get all the gems I need and never have to come back to Act 2. So that's the gems I want. I was telling about wave of conviction, mm -hmm. desecrate, and concentrated effect. 
Wave of Conviction and Desecrate are absolutely necessary, you need them uh, for the build and concentrated effect. You could uh, manage without it, but without it you would only have two link cremation. Two link cremation is kind of fine, it does so much damage that three link isn't really necessary. Uh, but it's better to have it than not to have it. Make sure you always talk to Clarissa here. If you forget to talk to Clarissa, you will have to come back to the zone. Um, which kind of sucks. Um, after Crematorium, I will need one Orb of Alteration to purchase Anger. Uh, the way it works out is Anger uh, gives you more damage than a combination of Herald of Thunder and Herald of Ice. So I always like to basically swap those two heralds for anger. They also freeze up a socket, which is which is nice. All it costs is a an orb of alteration from from Clarissa, and you obviously need to have a Life in his right hand. red socket for Death it. In his left. Also, uh, flat fire is going blows. to be better than flat cold or lightning because we are Black scaling. Fire damage on the tree because of flammability, and probably one or two other things that I'm forgetting at, uh, at this moment. I still have um, Holy Flame Totem equipped. That's mostly because I happen to have a socket for it. I don't particularly need it. If you happen to still have it equipped at this point in the run, you can use it for boss fights, only for boss fights. You don't want to clear monsters with it. It's not efficient at all. But at, at any point, if you feel like dropping it from basically um, late act two, you can drop and it. A living machine. There's your truth, heretic. If your lightning resist is very low, um, you need to be maybe a little bit more careful than I was here. I think I actually have two topaz rings right now. So, a little tip, um, I find that this is a good place to have a look at your inventory to see if you have all the defensive items that you need, uh, that you can buy from NPCs. So what I mean by that is that you need to have a leather belt, ideally, you need to have a decent uh, life flask, so I've got a, I think this is grand, so that's, that's perfectly good, you want at least, uh, well at least one grand, that would be great, you want a decent mana flask, I have all of those things. Uh, you also want to have two resistance rings. Um, it doesn't really matter which resistance rings you have. The important thing is that one of the resistances isn't um, like overcapped while the other ones are pretty low. I think at this point, I think I have a little too much um, lightning res, so I chose to buy a different res ring and the anger that I already mentioned. So I can replace one of those topaz rings that has less res and yeah, my lightning res is no longer overcapped and I have a bit more of the other resistances. As a goal, uh, by about the middle of Act 3 you want to have 60 plus fire res, 60 plus cold res and about 50 plus lightning res. I would say lightning is just a little bit less important. In this zone, again, if your lightning rest is weak, be very careful around the discharges. Um, the best way to play around them is don't let them stay near you for more than like a second. They need a bit of time to get the power charges so that they can blow up using I discharge. But if you, if you clear the pack Portal. quickly or you run away, both viable options, uh, they won't have time to explode. If your lightning rest is low and they explode near you, that could easily one-shot you. I have about 65 lightning rest, so that shouldn't be a problem, even if I'm playing a little bit uh, sloppily. So again, the, the clearing of packs is basically just done with... Um, with um, rolling magma, which is linked to onslaught and combustion. Ideally, you want to be using. Um, if you happen to have a blue, blue, green 
from early Act 1, you want to be using um, Rolling Magma with Onslaught and Ellie Prolif at the start, and then at level 8, I replace that with that Combustion, which you get draw. once you get to prison. And you essentially use that setup until uh, level 8 when you swap to uh, Armageddon Brand and Cremation. So at this point, um, it's a good idea to, to look at your res. Uh, if any of your resistances are not particularly high, you want to vendor all the rare items that you have to get transmutes, good and luck. then mastercraft the resistances that you are missing. So I know that I am missing some fire res and some cold res, um, so I'm crafting those resistances. Ideally you want to craft them on scepters, because you'll be using them uh, basically until the end of the run. Resistances are suffixes, so they go perfectly with the um, scepter recipes. In case you didn't know, you can also mastercraft white items. So if you have a um, resistance ring, like a two stone ring that is white, you don't have an essence for it or anything, you can just mastercraft resistance on it. And that, in fact, that's, that's, a, that's a great way to cap your resistances. Act 3 is... is uh, the act of resistances. Resistances help a lot in this act. Blue, blue, blue chest. So, uh, I picked this chest up because I'm still looking to get a second thrilling. You only need uh, one thrilling until level 28. Uh, well, I mean, Question even is. if you didn't have one thrilling, it would, it would still be fine, but the goal is to have um, the second thrilling when you get to level 28, so you Armorer. can use that for cremation, and you really want it to be blue, blue, green. If you can't do that, then just a uh, blue, green. So I picked mm -hmm. up a uh, blue, blue, blue chest. Magic scepter. Um, just on the off chance I can use chromes on it to get a blue, blue, green. The other chest I have right now has a green, green, blue, which is not not ideal at all. There's no uh, good support. For cremation that's green until you're like level 38. That would be GMP, I suppose. So I went to Solaris first because uh, my level was quite low. You want to be level 24 before you enter docks. I think I'm not even level 24 yet, so I need to catch up on experience a little bit. Great way to catch up on experience is by clearing the packs that are always around this area. I think I'm going to clear all of them. Um, I'm not sure what these monsters are actually fighting there. But I don't Blacksmith. Mind. I've got so much currency that I don't, I don't even bother picking up these blacksmiths. I've got all the gems from Act 1 and Act 2 that I need. Um, but there is one thing that I'm still missing, and I believe I still haven't uh, noticed that. I don't have a chance orb. Without a chance of I can't buy cremation, which is my main single target uh, spell. So, I've hit level 24, so I want to replace uh, both heralds with anger. And uh, that's a bit of a damage boost, and also gives me a free socket. I think I'm actually at this point picking up a couple of chromatic items, hoping that I can get a some chromes for them and then get that thrilling that I need. It's a bit of effort but uh, it's nice to have a thrilling. It's not really too much time since I've got some I've got some room in my, in my, in my inventory. Armorer. Even to pick up another one of those. No beast of burden. Blue green chest. So before you go to the ebony barracks you want to be level 25 and a half roughly. Um, that's a nice experience benchmark, um, so that you can be basically on target to hit level 27 for piety and 28 before Dominus. Magmorp is uh, pretty nice for clearing this zone. It's a lot of damage, it's got decent AoE. Um, if you prefer to use it over... Um, Orb of Storms or Frostbomb, that's a great build to yes. use. 
So I'm trying to get those chromes, and I actually succeeded in getting blue, blue, green. So that's my, as I would say, end game chest. So I'm going to use it until the end of the run. Typically, you want to get a jade amulet here. If you don't have dexterity on any of your uh, items, you will need some to equip cremation. If I can get a chance orb to actually buy cremation. Um, so after catacombs, I picked up flammability, which is the, the curse I'll be using until the end of the run. Make sure you have that equipped, if possible, for the general that that improves your damage by a lot. Good gem. I don't need the heralds, so I always have this one, one socket for flammability here. Make sure to curse the boss, and at this point you're mostly just um, spamming. Rolling magma, that went really smoothly. What I could have done better than is I could have uh, placed flame walls so that I do just a you bit joke. more damage with rolling magma. But as you saw, the damage is so high that uh, even a suboptimal play makes it look easy. Okay, now I want to hit level 27 before before piety. And I think it, right about this point, I. I remember I realized I don't have a chance orb, which is a problem because I do need that uh, cremation. So if you don't have a, a chance orb or a, an orb of fusing, um, one way to try to create it is by um, by getting it through the uh, NPC shop. So you can buy an orb of fusing for four. Uh, Jewelers and, and so each jeweler costs two alterations. So in theory, you can this way buy an orb of chance for eight alterations. That's quite a lot of alterations, but um, it's doable. You just essentially need to pick up rare items from two or three bosses, like fill up your inventory with those items. Um, and then eventually get to 8, and if you do it smoothly, that will only maybe cost you like a minute. Uh, it's quite a lot in a speedrun, but if you get very unlucky with the currency, you might have to do that. I noticed I will need a green socket for Desecrate. Um, so I chrome the boots. So from Piety I will try to pick up Lassie all the rare items I can uh, I have room for and I'll try to fender them to get as many alterations as possible. Now as far as the uh, swap to Armageddon Brand and Cremation you, you will essentially but replace you your Rolling Magma with um, Armageddon Brand and then you will have a Thrilling for Cremation. Magic Unfortunately, I only got like one rare item there. That's not very good. You get free um, Armageddon Bless Brand from Maramoa here. Kora. That's for killing Gravicious. That's the reason we're killing Gravicious in this build. And here, ideally, I would have a full inventory of rare items that I can vendor. Uh, so I have lots of alterations, but that's not the you case. But I will have to improvise somehow. So I'm uh, I'm still going to attempt to do the swap to fire, maybe a little bit later than than usually, uh, to make the swap into fire smoother, to make it easier for yourself. You want to start it as soon as you can. So I would recommend that in the Imperial Gardens you already put in desecrate, as I'm doing right now, as well as um, wave of conviction. Uh, because those gems you can already start using, whereas you can't put in Armageddon Brand yet because that requires level 28. Velocity so here I'm going flash. to do the final trial. Um, for this build I recommend doing the lab after Dominus, because that, that's already after the fire swap. Um, so you already have the powerful single target of cremation, and that's really just the best time to do it. 
if you try to do the lab at level 27, it's perfectly doable, but you're also suffering from an experience penalty, which I'm not a fan of. I'm, I normally wouldn't open this kind of strong box, but I'm pretty desperate for any rare item so I can get that cremation. Uh, a chance of where a fuse could always drop from from uh, such a box. I'm just going to identify a couple of the items so I have more yes. room for any rare items that drop. See Basically you. anything that could give me alteration shards I am vendoring at this point. Just getting the waypoint here and I'm on my way to kill the Dominus. So the body armor I have will be used for cremation, that's blue blue green, so that's um, cremation once I actually have it with concentrated effect and elemental focus. Elemental focus you get after killing Weaver and concentrated effect you can buy at any point after that. Now because I don't have the chance orb and I'm not Every actually close uh, to, to having that chance orb because I'm, I'm only at two alterations out of eight, I'm trying to figure out an old, a, a different way of actually doing damage to Dominus. Now you won't have to do it uh, in majority of your runs. In most runs you would at this point um, simply have Armageddon Brand and Cremation. You would drop Rolling Magma but I think I do need to keep it because I will still oh. use it for... Um, I will still use it for single target, but that's only if you don't have a chance orb or a fuse. So don't pay too much attention to my um, rolling magma setup. In most runs, that would simply be. Uh, a cremation thrilling. In this one, it's just uh, Ruby. improvising something so I can get the remaining five alterations so I can purchase cremation. But as you will see, even with uh, this fairly scuffed setup, the damage will still be quite high. Just shows that. Um, the build is strong enough that even if you don't get some of the stuff that you need, you can still get uh, really good times getting through the, the first few acts. Typically I would have a little bit less experience at this point. Um, I opened some extra strong boxes, I killed some extra rare monsters hoping to get alterations but you only really need 28 just barely 28 for dominus is fine you, so again normally this fight would go a bit differently uh, without rolling magma at this point you wouldn't have rolling magma typically chance. and there's my chance a bit late but better late than never so i'm going to buy the cremation and have a proper yeah. proper single target setup bye so level 28 is, is when you typically drop rolling magma, you don't need that anymore. Uh, cremation and Armageddon Brand are so powerful that uh, basically nothing can compete with them. So with uh, Cremation and Armageddon Brand, um, you place Desecrate on the ground to create some corpses. Have you ever seen the on those corpses you spawn God three exile. Cremation geysers. That does a huge amount of damage. On top of that, you apply exposure on the boss using Wave of Conviction. You curse the boss using flammability, and um, you have a few Armageddon brands near the boss doing extra damage. As soon as you have the uh, Rune Binder Keystone, two Armageddon brands will deal damage to a single enemy. I usually get it around this point, slightly before the boss or right after boss. I actually mismanaged my mana here a little bit, but I know I do enough damage that that should be a problem. So I'm actually finishing the run here. 
because um, the method for Act 4 and Act 5 is identical as for um, as for the the build that I did uh, with like Orb of Storm, Storm um, Frostbomb and Stormblast Mine Start into Armageddon and Branding Cremation so if you want to have a look at how to do Act 4 and Act 5 um, check out that video, I will link that in the description as well um, and also I do lab basically at this point right after I get to the aqueduct this is the time where I do lab it takes about uh, two or three minutes and then I'm on my way to do act four so this is the tree that um, I use for this build it's exactly the same as the tree for um, for um, Stormblast Mine, Ooze and Frostbomb into Armageddon Cremation um, so this is the rune by this. Once you have that, two Armageddon brands do damage to a single um, monster, so that that increases your single target damage a little bit. Uh, not that it needs to be any higher; it's already quite ridiculous. Uh, so right now, my setup is—I uh, think I will show this right now. Um, so it's um, cremation, conquer effect, elemental focus, combustion, onslaught, Armageddon brand. And a bunch of utility, so anger, wave of conviction, flammability, leap slam with faster attacks. It's important to have faster attacks from level 18. So that's uh, Frost Blink with Arcane Search. So uh, I drop Frost Blink right after lab. Uh, at this point, with the Guardian Ascendancy with the Frenzy Charges, you have so much attack speed that just leap slamming forward is faster than using combination of leap slam with Frost Blink. Um, if you are struggling with links, when you're doing the swap into Armageddon Brand and Cremation, you can drop Frostblink uh, around level 28. That's perfectly fine too. That's not, not not that's not going to slow you down. And the remaining gems would be um, Steel Skin on left click and Desecrate in the boots, I believe. Uh, so my my resistances are like this. So again, the goal is probably something like 60 plus fire, 60 plus cold, and 50 plus lightning. My cold is maybe just a little bit low. I like to have at least 60 cold because with low cold rest, um, scepters of God become quite quite dangerous, and the free spells from those monsters can very easily uh, freeze you, chain freeze you, and then all it takes is a second and you are dead so ideally you want to have at least 60 cold rest uh, if your cold rest is very low be very careful about those free sponsors okay I think I've said all I want to say about this build um, as I said earlier on um, rolling magma achieves basically the same kind of times as um, Orb of Storms, Frostbomb and Stormblast setup they basically become the same build from level 28 with Armageddon Brand and Cremation um, just to show you the Rolling Magma guide I made that's going to be in the description if you want to have a look it has some general notes and then later on it describes um, in some detail exactly what you need to be doing, uh, what gems to pick up, what experience you should be looking at in specific zones, um, how to use your ab abilities. Briefly mentioned here about um, rolling magma, a bit about how to use cremation uh, um, in Act 3 section as well. Okay, so that's all I have for you. If you have any questions, if anything that I've said is unclear, leave a uh, comment under the video and I'll try to answer them. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye!